a story. Story. Purple rain. Just those two words will send a burst of emotion laden reactions, recollections and energy shuddering through the soul of anyone acquainted with the work of Prince Rogers Nelson. This album is almost at times too big to look at, like the sun. It has become a totemic masterpiece, an ineffable shorthand for the commercial and some would argue creative peak of an artist who had just cemented his place as a legend the musical stratosphere. This obviously also has its downsides. Prince once described Purple Rain as his albatross, stating that it'll be hanging around my neck as long as I'm making music. Indeed, Prince's reaction to this high mountain of musical appreciation and adulation would become obvious with his next album when he determined to continue to grow and experiment as an artist. I believe that Purple Rain is a very personal album in the sense that almost everyone has their own individual, specific interpretation and connection to what it means for them. It might connect to the time they first heard the album and what they were experiencing in their life at that time. It might be a particular love, a spiritual moment, a feel-good summer heightened by Take Me With You, a cold, barren winter or loneliness enveloped in the angst of When Doves Cry, or the piercing transcendence of the heaven-soaring purple rain itself. And... In a slight change to the way albums are usually approached, I want to state the case that this time and this specific album, it's not about facts. It's not about when Prince recorded the tracks, where he was, the band dynamic or the logistics of the creative process. This time, it's all about the feelings, the experience, the delving into Prince's otherworldly intoxication. Purple Rain can seem intimidating, overwhelming and too familiar. I would urge you to forget these concerns and remember that Prince just wanted you to enjoy yourself listening, to think and feel whatever it is that the music inspires within you. This music was meant to be played, celebrated, danced to, cried to and cherished. So let's dive straight in. Dearly beloved, welcome to our Purple Rain Review. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Was there ever a more famous introduction to a song? That church sermon opening with synth chords echoing those of a church organ will go on to be one of Prince's most famous calling cards. Whether opening hundreds of shows during his career or beginning the encores, Let's Go Crazy was an instant classic, made for live performance, one that has rocked the world for over 30 years and one which Prince would reinvent live during the late 80s, adding in the call and response section with the audience of go go go, go go go, to a complete overhaul of the track with Third Eye Girl during the 2010s, which completely reinvented everything we thought we knew about this track, in a gritty, mean and loud guitar laden assault, such is the versatility in this track, and Prince's songwriting and creation. This opening track, on Purple Rain is a million miles away from anything on Prince's last album, 1999, as Prince and the Revolution tear it up in a blistering rock track full of screeching guitars, pounding drums and purple bananas. This opening salvo is a full-on assault to the senses 
as Prince and his band ascend to mass market popularity and global superstardom. And this is just the edited version for the album. The full version, which you can see and hear at the beginning of the Purple Rain movie, is incredible, with extended instrumental breaks, complete with jazzy piano sections, where Prince seems to play duff notes on purpose. But I digress. The lyrics to Let's Go Crazy have been interpreted many ways over the years, with many amazing theories about the meaning of the song. It's the genius of Prince's songwriting that you can always find what you need or are looking for in his words. Prince has said himself that the track was about God and the devil and the fight between good and evil, with Let's Go Crazy representing good and the elevator, the devil. I'm not going to let the elevator take us down. Oh no, let's go. Prince said in his interview with Chris Rock at Paisley Park that he had to change up the words as at that time you couldn't say God on the radio. The message here is be positive, live your life well while you can and make the most of everything. We're all excited but we don't know why. Maybe it's cause we're all gonna die. When we do, what's it all for? You better live now before the Grim Reaper come knocking on your door. Prince's guitar on this track is phenomenal and it tends to get taken for granted as Let's Go Crazy has been played so many times over the years on the radio or live or just by ourselves playing the record, the tape, CD or download. You have to go, hang on, wait a minute, just listen to that again. Just listen to his solo. It is ridiculous. And of course, the most well-known and famous part is the incredible assault on the guitar to close the track. It really is just incredible, coupled with a crescendo of drum rolls and ending with Prince's pleading, TAKE ME AWAY! It blows the roof off the building every time and leaves you exhausted. Although Let's Go Crazy is an extremely positive and upbeat song, when you break down the lyrics and look at the final verse, it now feels full of irony and tinged with sadness after the way Prince passed away. Doctor everything will be alright, will make everything go wrong. Pills and thrills and daffodils will kill. Hang tough, children. Let's Go Crazy is a fantastic opening track to the Purple Rain album. Its frenetic, high-octane energy is still just as palpable as the day it was recorded. A stonewall classic with countless incredible live performances over the years, Let's Go Crazy went on to open the Purple Rain movie and was rightfully included on every Prince hits collection, from the hits the B-sides to the very best of Prince and the Forever Prince album. The unedited version or special dance mix was also included on the Ultimate Prince and the Purple Rain Deluxe album. It was released as the second single from the Purple Rain album, giving Prince his second US number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It also charted in the top 10 in the UK, Australia and Canada. A true monster hit to kick this album off. Surely it doesn't get more iconic than this. Oh no, let's go! may be considered the weakest track on the album, Take Me With You has always been a fascinating track for me personally. Just those opening drums, I've never heard anything like that before or since. The way they seem to roll over you, just so different. Take Me With You is played as Prince takes Apollonia for a ride on his motorcycle, and you can see why. It's a perfect track for listening to while riding your bike or going for a drive on a beautiful sunny spring or summer's day. The wind blowing through your hair, the sun in the sky, the ultimate feel good. Just don't get the seat all wet. Take Me With You is a duet by Prince and Apollonia, and although Apollonia doesn't have the greatest voice in the world, it does work and their vocals fit together well. Albeit with Apollonia's vocals more in the background during the verses, but coming to the fore during the chorus. The music is bright and breezy and is carried along on the breeze by a catchy as hell lead line performed by violins and cellos, played by David Coleman, Novi Novog and Susie Katayama. And after the fireworks and storm that was Let's Go Crazy, it's a welcome rest to the senses and lets you prepare for the incredible journey to come on the rest of the album. To borrow one of the Nightchild's phrases, it's a real palate cleanser. Lyrically, there isn't too much to get your teeth into. It's a basic love story of two people, Prince's character The Kid and Apollonia, who just want to be together, no matter where, or when, or how. I don't care where we go, I don't care what we do. 
I don't care, pretty baby. Just take me with you. It's all about their passion for each other and longing to spend the night together. I don't care if we spend the night at your mansion. I don't care if we spend the night on the town. All I want is to spend the night together. All I want is to spend the night in your arms. Before you know it, those rolling drums return, signalling the end of the track. And as the music fades, you can start to see the image of Prince and Apollonia disappearing into the distance on his bike. It's the calm before the storm. Before the beautiful ones. The beautiful ones always smash the picture. From the very first few seconds of this stunning track, one point is clearly made. No one programs a drum machine like print. The sumptuous pads of the song, interspersed with a flexing, ricocheting echo effects that dances throughout the song, mesmerises your mind as it goes. It is then that print is utterly perfect, life as a feather in heaven, delicate falsetto, comes and introduces itself. To say that it still takes me back after all these years would be a colossal understatement. It is simply exquisite, utterly ethereal and unmatched by anyone. It's virtually impossible to be able to adequately describe the sonic perfection of this extraordinary vocal and it remains a truly great example of the depth of talent and ability Prince possesses. The story arc of this track is not so much of a slow heightened uplift of raw emotion and vulnerability as a tour de force journey from the utterly heavenly, angelic vocal adoration of Prince's muse to a full-out hyper-explosion of pleading, panting, begging, visceral, demanding, prostrate, tormented and agonising exploration of the guttural pain of love, lust and yearning. There have been very few artists who take a track such as this in the way that this track starts and have the ability and confidence and utter honesty to propel it into the unexplored stratosphere like this. Prince's delicately beautiful lyrics are simply entrancing. You were so hard to find. The beautiful ones, they hurt you every time. The gently soaring musical motif is an overlooked beauty, as is Prince's contemplation of marriage. Just after three minutes into the track is when Prince can't hold in his frustration any longer and he bursts out into an almost throat-woundingly, emotionally ragged, desperate pleading which haunts the soul as he pleads, baby, 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 listen to me. Prince demands to know, is it him or is it me? I gotta know. There has never been such an unbridled, lay it out all on the table, protestation of complete, dangerous, achingly open and vulnerable defiance. This track is part heavenly love song, part pain-filled argument, part emotional exorcism, and it's all Prince. Simply divine. Of all the tracks on this album, Computer Blue was probably the song that had the most altered and evolving inclusion on this project. Originally a massive 14 minute monster jam, which represented a huge proportion of the album, it was edited down as more tracks entered into the fray, finally being shortened once again to include Take Me With You. The best part of this transition to the album is that the longer hallway speech Computer Blue exists was included recently on the Purple Rain Deluxe in 2017. In the Purple Rain film the track enters hot on the heels of an emotional one-to-one -one between Prince and his father, played by the sadly recently lost Clarence Williams III. It is fitting on this album that Prince's real father, John L. Nelson, receives the credit as a co-writer, alongside Prince, Lisa and Wendy. There is a strong argument that alongside Let's Go Crazy, this is the guitar hero piece of the album. The track certainly feels more dark, brooding, restless, frustrated, laced with angst and machismo more than anything else on the project. Like several of the Purple Rain tracks, this was originally recorded live before being laid down in the studio and it still very much retains that live energy. The iconic opening interchange between Wendy and Lisa discussing whether the water is warm enough to begin is classic Prince, blending sexuality, gender and double entendre. Indeed, the opening of the track sees the guitars growling, raging against their constraint, yearning to be set free. Prince then does this with a hollering scream. The main riff motif of the track is a pure earworm groove that is one of the tracks that feels like it's always been there. It's so familiar and yet at the same time so fresh. Prince's lyrics are akin to shouting questions into the void, trying angrily to understand just what is going wrong in his life. Where is my love life? 
but can it be? There must be something wrong with the machinery. Where is my love life? Tell me, where has it gone? Somebody, please, please tell me what the hell is wrong. Prince at this point is pushing his voice in a fiery, growling baritone. The section at around 1 minute 40 sees remarkable guitar work firing up and down in a set of whirling slides which eventually come crashing down in a scattergun effect of drums and the breakdown of the track into an established groove. Sometimes while listening to the song it's hard not to hear the Syracuse version with the love and lust speech. Both have four letters but they're entirely different words. This is a track that could easily, as Prince proved, extend out into a jam that could last so much longer. There is a virtually timeless beauty to the main guitar motif that translates so well to the piano and I think it will remain one of the iconic riffs of the age. The only downside to this version is that it merely whets your appetite to the pulsating, visceral, live and extended versions. But Prince, always, even though he gave us so much, was always keen to leave us wanting more. And that scream at the close of the track, has there ever been a more powerful and chest-burning transition from one track to the next? Hello, how are you? Fine, fine, cause I know that the Lord is coming soon. Coming, coming soon. I knew a girl named Nikki, I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. In an album full of iconic moments, this one would become one of the most infamous and notorious. The song that will go on to introduce the world to the parental guidance sticker, thanks to Tipper Gore and her parents' music resource centre. A committee she felt inspired to create after hearing her 11-year-old daughter listening to this song. Dolly Nikki was number one on a list of songs called The Filthy 15 that was compiled as the most objectionable songs of the time. Prince had just become the latest thing after the huge success of the Purple Rain film and album and many unsuspecting parents bought the album for their children having no knowledge of the sexual nature of some of his writing at that time. In the case of Darling Nikki, the subject being female masturbation. When it came to reviewing this track, I tried to think and go back to my 16 year old self and to when I first heard it for the first time. It was like nothing I'd ever heard before. The music was confusing and the ending just bizarre and I really didn't know what to make of it. It reminded me of the scene in Purple Rain after Prince performs the track in front of Apollonia in a spiteful rage of jealousy. Billy the club owner bursts into the kids dressing room and they have a heated argument that ends with Billy giving the kids some good advice. Your music makes sense to no one but yourself. That's how it felt for me those first listens. It's easy now to forget as it's become so familiar over the years just how strange and odd the track is. From the opening notes to the backwards vocals of Prince's ha 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 at the close. It's strange but captivating experience and listen. Prince pulls you into this world of hot lust and passion with a story about Nikki, a girl who lives in a castle. A girl who has every kind of device money can buy. A girl who just wants to grind. The whole feel and delivery of the track is almost animal-like from Prince's groans and screams to the pounding cymbals and distorted rock guitar of the lead lines. Like a wildcat waiting to pounce, the atmosphere and music just builds and builds until the final climatic scream from Prince. Then all hell breaks loose as Prince screams, begs and pleads for Nicky to come back. Your darling little Prince wants to grind. Although it could be classed as a heavy rock track, the slow way in which it opens and the almost finding salvation ending really put it in a category all of its own. Many of Prince's best songs are when he's got a story to tell and Darling Nicky is no exception. Here Prince tells the story of Nicky, a sex fiend, a girl he met in a hotel lobby, you know the rest. She takes him to a castle and asks him to sign on the dotted line. The lights go out and Nicky starts to grind. Like so many of Prince's songs, Darling Nicky seems to encapsulate the struggle in Prince between being good and bad, between sex and God. With Darling Nicky possibly another incarnation of the devil, offering passion, lust, forbidden fruits like no other. And with Prince seemingly hooked and begging for Nicky to come back, he then has an epiphany at the end with the backwards monologue. 
complete with swirling winds and rainfall as if to symbolise cleaning and purifying his thoughts, his very soul. This dichotomy was publicly played out by Prince on the Purple Rain tour, with Prince playing his bad side up for the audience before being chastised by God for his behaviour. I know I said I'd be good, but they dig it when I'm bad. Darling Nikki was performed regularly on the Purple Rain tour and featured prominently in the Purple Rain movie, and when you hear that music at the end, the vision of Prince grinding and thrusting his hips to every single beat is indelibly printed on the mind. Darling Nikki really is a unique track, an experience you will never forget. Shocking and intriguing, a melting pot of hot rock, lust and raw passion. And if you want to go back and experience it again, well in the words of Nikki herself, Thank you for a funky time. Call me up whenever you want to grind. I defy anyone to find a track that is as old as When Doves Cry, but still sounds so stunningly fresh and vibrant. Not only that, but one which straddles high pop acclaim and deals with such self-reflective and existential questioning as this masterpiece. When Doves Cry is a very strange, unique creation. It has become popularly known, ironically, for what it famously doesn't have, a bass line, after another of Prince's creative masterstrokes. I think this is a key point in Prince's remarkable and idiosyncratic process. He wasn't afraid of experimenting, taking risks, and then see where those risks took him. Prince very much felt that there were very few rules in the studio he couldn't break if he wanted to. From the very first moments of gurgling, growling, staccato guitar, leading into that simply divine synth line, this is utter perfection. Light, airy, strident, crisp, clear and minimalist. No one ever did it better. Lyrically, Prince is a thousand miles away from the regular bubblegum pop fair as he seductively opens with the lines, dig if you will the picture of you and I engaged in a kiss. The sweat of your body covers me. Can you, my darling, can you picture this? However, for me, this track is all about the core central themes which are also explored in the film itself. How can you just leave me standing alone in a world that's so cold? Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father, too bold. Maybe you're just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Why do we scream at each other? This is what it sounds like when doves cry. This track intertwines that soul aching loneliness, that quest to understand your place in the world, your faults and your purpose. It was a song that resonated across the world to so many different people in so many different ways. A huge worldwide hit and a track Prince would return to often. Although it never saw as much live concert action as Purple Rain, Let's Go Crazy or The Beautiful Ones, it would always feel intriguing when it did appear, notably on the Love Sexy and Nude Tours. Personally, it always frustrates me when the radio stations play an edited version as the collection of screams beginning at around 4 minutes 17 are truly remarkable. The last sustained scream being one of Printer's most soul-shuddering expositions of gospel as existential angst. Just remarkable. The intricacy of the synth solo and the sumptuous layered backing vocals all race to match this with great effect. Simply superb. It remains a seismic track and you have to remind yourself that this was a Prince one-man band production. Prince truly at the height of the zeitgeist with a track that will always hold a special place in the history of this genius. During the Purple Rain album, we've gone through the themes of good and evil with Let's Go Crazy. We've experienced the ultimate in heartbreak and jealousy through the beautiful ones. We've experienced the heights of forbidden lust and passion of darling Nikki. And we felt the sadness and abandonment of a dove's cry. And now, here on I Would Die For You, we have the ultimate sacrifice. As Prince here appears to be acting as the embodiment of Jesus, by dying for our sins. But of course in that uniquely Prince way, full of synths, funky guitar riffs, drums and bass. In fact it's noted that Prince was actually writing this track as the embodiment of the Holy Trinity, with Prince first being God on the first verse. I'm not your woman, I'm not your man, I am something that you'll never understand. I'll never beat you, I'll never lie. And if you're evil, I'll forgive you by and by. And then Jesus, on the second verse. I'm not your lover. I'm not your friend. I am something that you'll never comprehend. No need to worry. No need to cry. I'm your Messiah. 
and you're the reason why. And then, in the third verse, transforming himself into a dove, something the Holy Spirit does in the New Testament. I am not a human, I am a dove. I am your conscience, I am love. All I really need is to know that you believe. Prince here, like with Let's Go Crazy, was breaking new ground by getting his spiritual message across to the masses in a way that would be accepted and played on the radio as it's left to the listener to draw their own conclusions. The whole feel of this track has a joyous and celebratory feel and it was placed at the end of the Purple Rain movie along with Baby I'm a Star for this purpose with Prince having won the day with his performance of Purple Rain before it. Like Baby I'm a Star and Purple Rain I Would Die For You was recorded live at First Avenue in August 1983 helping to capture the feel of the movie's ending on the album. A Purple Rain tour rehearsal version was also recorded in 1984 for the single's 12 inch release and was reportedly 30 minutes in length which was then cut down by two thirds for the release. I Would Die For You is an important track in Prince's spiritual songwriting. He was brilliant at getting around the censorship but leaving enough information for those who knew where to look. He packaged it up in a brilliant, uplifting, feel-good song and when you see Prince's live performance of it on the Purple Rain tour, the message is as clear as day now, as Prince stands there, dressed head to toe in pearly, glittering white. You. I would. Die for. You. The party track to end all party tracks. Pure, unadulterated bravado. As has been said about Prince by some acute observers, who else but Prince could get away with this? For any other artist, this could come across as boastful or arrogant, but Prince is clever in the way he negates this. But firstly, the very fact that it appears at a time in his career when he was undoubtedly top of the world and ascending to his new crown, it serves as a triumphant, exuberant celebration of reaching that pinnacle. Secondly, Prince just delivers this track with so much verve, joy de vivre and tongue-in-cheek fun that it's simply impossible not to get swept up in it. It's simply irresistible. There is so much going on with this track from the backward masked conversations that begin the song to the piercing segments that begin with Prince screaming or directing the song to another band member. Hey, look me over. Tell me do you like what you see? Hey, I ain't got no money, but honey I'm rich and personality. Prince's cocksure swagger is nowhere more evident than when he demands, take a picture sweetie, I ain't got time to waste. Something Prince would deliver to great effect in the legendary Super Bowl performance many years later. This track truly has everything. At 2 minutes 30 are some of the most triumphant screams ever put to record. It's as if his unrestrained joy simply escapes earthly limits and hits the stratosphere. The backing vocals on the chorus have this almost holding your breath sustain which powers the urgency of the track. One of the absolute joys on this track is superb keyboard work with Matt Fink showing his skills and the entire stop and start breakdowns where Prince stops the track only to direct its continuance are so amazingly effective. There's a reason Tim Burton and Jack Nicholson used this track during a rough draft of the 1989 Batman movie. It's just pure mania. <laughs> Prince has claimed his place for life at the very top of the game and it was clear that this song embraced that newfound adulation. There is a fitting little story in the superb book DMSR, The First Decade, by the awesome Peer Nielsen, which I think perfectly encapsulates this track and his moment in time. Susan Rogers, Prince's engineer, tells the tale. He got what he wished for, but unlike many young artists who might have reached that stage and just lost it, Prince had the ball by the horns. I remember one day he was at the warehouse. He was so happy he was dancing around. Myself and someone else both went to ask him a question and we both said, Prince, at the same time. He swung around on his heel and said, I must be famous. And I looked into his face and I realised that he was famous and that he knew he was famous and that he was delighted to be famous. I think that was a very productive and very happy time in his life. You didn't see fear or trepidation on his part at all. I think that's a perfect little moment when Prince finally appreciated the joy in singing, baby, I'm a star. My first memory of Purple Rain was finding it on the Hits album of 1984, which as a 10 year old boy I'd asked my mum to buy me as I was crazy about the movie Ghostbusters and Ray Parker Jr's Ghostbusters single was on it. I then remember hearing Purple Rain and then playing it to some of my friends as I actually found the part where he was screaming kinda funny, being a 10 year old kid. 
Also, Shaka Khan's cover of Prince's I Feel For You was on the same album. Looking back now, it seems Prince was there, calling and waiting for me. But it wasn't my time yet. I just wasn't ready. It wasn't until another movie I was crazy about came along, and it just so happens that Prince was attached, that I took the bait and was finally hooked. That movie was Batman, and the song Bat Dance had me going gaga that June of 1989. I had to get the movie soundtrack, and fast. Once I started walking down the purple path, I naturally wanted to discover more music by Prince. My cousin was fortunate enough to have been taken to see Prince at Wembley Arena on the new tour, and came back raving about his performance, and especially Purple Rain. We soon had a copy of the Purple Rain album, and I had my first proper listen to the track in its entirety at 16 years of age. I was gobsmacked. It was one of the longest tracks I'd ever heard at that point in my life. Every time I thought the track was going to finish, it kept going. The guitar solos, then the signature guitar hook, and then Prince's woo hoo 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 Then the guitar again, and then those beautiful strings that finally do bring the track to a close. It was majestic, epic beyond words. It had rock, it had gospel, it had symphony. It was simply a masterpiece. Fast forward 31 years, and this 16-year-old kid is now a middle-aged man, wondering how on earth to review a track that's one of the most iconic in popular culture. What can you say that hasn't already been said about one of the greatest songs ever recorded? How can you do it justice when so many professional writers, music journalists and scholars have already had their say down through the years? The weight of this track, and indeed the entire album, is almost paralysing when it comes to reviewing it. One can feel trapped and bogged down by the voices of the past and a real feeling of imposter syndrome. So I looked for an angle, a way in, and so decided that maybe together we could do it justice. Our words shared of a track that means so much to so many, not just Prince fans. Our thoughts shared on a track that we must have listened to a million times over down the years. Our feelings, our emotions, our very souls, brought together by one man and his vision. Let those beautiful chords of Wendy open proceedings. We live in a world where facts are considered crucial. They are contested, fought over and wrangled with. When it comes to the track Purple Rain, the facts I would personally argue, are never going to convey to you the heart of this extraordinarily elegant work. Yes, I could say that Purple Rain was originally offered to Stevie Nicks, who was scared by the enormity of the song and felt unable to develop it. I could mention that after telling the revolution during a rehearsal that he wanted to try something mellow, Prince heard Wendy's chords and the song shifted from a country feeling to the harder edged track it became. I could even talk about the fact that Prince was concerned the track sounded perhaps a little too similar to the song Faithfully by the group Journey and sought the blessing of Jonathan Cain from the group. But ultimately, if you want me to be fully honest, these facts don't really get us any closer to understanding just why this track, a track probably performed more consistently and often than any other in Prince's catalogue, resonates and impacts so many people so deeply. I truly hope that this makes sense, forgive me if it doesn't, but there is a place, a moment in time, when a piece of music, if it catches you just at the right moment, moves beyond the usual experience. It can envelop you in a way that defies explanation. Purple Rain is both a song of reassuring comfort and pleading defiance. It is packed full of high intensity energy, which at times strains its lead, desperately trying to free itself. Its mesmerising, comforting opening chords demand your attention within one beautiful second. The soaring, stratospheric, wailing, piercing guitar solo is like a triumphant rage against an unfair world which the track transcends for a thousand feet. The achingly haunting, bleeding strings leave you in tattered tears emerging from a broken-hearted catharsis, destroyed but rebuilt, mournful but content, anguished but hopeful, grief-stricken, but reborn. There are many times when you think Purple Rain might lose its effect 
It's a track you've heard in various guises and renditions by Prince, shortened one verse versions, piano versions, and countless cover versions by every artist. But just as you slip into becoming a touch blasé, the track will jump out at you like a reminder of some great truth you always knew but had temporarily forgotten. I have sat in the darkness weeping to the track, been stunned to the spot by the song, felt empowered, energised and triumphant while absorbing the mastery of this man, this legend prince, toying with my open emotions like a sustained guitar note piercing the heavens. For many people in life, there are many varied moments when words fail us. It might be a religious experience, a near-death experience, the birth of a child, the moment when you fall in love, the moment when you find a deep peace, the accomplishment of some great achievement. In all of these moments, no matter what anyone tells you, it is a weak facsimile of the experience. You had to be there. You had to experience it yourself. Sometimes works of art are popular, but not great. Sometimes they are great and not popular. Very occasionally, they are both. This might sound a little strange to say, but Purple Rain feels like an all-loving, encompassing soundscape that simply tells you it's okay. We're all invited on this journey and you can, even if only for a few minutes, just shed the weight of the world and let him guide you. He never meant to cause you any pain. All is forgiven. As a rule, I've always tried to only listen to Purple Rain just a few times a year, so I don't get complacent to its genius. Like so many things in life, we get used to and then take them for granted without even realising we're doing it. But then you see a live performance of Purple Rain like the Super Bowl or the incredible 18 minute version from the Syracuse Purple Rain tour and you think, how on earth could I ever take this song for granted? Purple Rain was made for the stage and live performance. It demands it and the full-on theatrical experience that goes with it. There is an incredible energy and unison of being among a crowd bathed in purple light. Lighters or phones these days held aloft in the air, singing together as one. It's beautiful and moving and it was never lost on Prince. He genuinely loved performing this track and the reaction it always received. Seeing Prince play Purple Rain live was one of those bucket list things which I was genuinely blessed to witness a number of times, each time drawing on a different emotion. The pure excitement of the first time at the Diamonds and Pearls tour, to the sadness as Prince told the audience it would be the last time he would be performing the song for a while on the final show of the Act 2 tour, as Prince was transforming into the symbol and then utterly shredded the life out of his guitar with just incredible emotion, leaving me with tears streaming down my face. It would not be the last time he would do that to me with this song. Such is the emotion and power of every performance that I genuinely struggle to listen to and watch anyone else attempt it. Seeing the revolution and the MPG try since his passing brought it home even more. It was emotional, but not because of how they played it but because of that empty mic stand in the middle of the stage. That huge void and gap left by Prince, not just on the stage, but in our very lives. The day Prince passed away, Purple Rain was the first song I heard. Not by choice, it just came on the radio suddenly. Why? Well, because it was the track he was most famous for with the general public. The movie, the album, it made him a megastar known the world over. It made him synonymous with the colour purple. Ask most people on the street to name a Prince track and Purple Rain would probably be their first choice. It's woven into the very consciousness and fabric of our lives. Always present, always there and always ready to deliver on every single listen. If I could urge people to do just one thing with this album, it is simply to experience it. Roll around in it, delve into it. Close your eyes and listen to the eternal battle unfold in Let's Go Crazy. Play Take Me With You on a beautiful sun-filled day. Let your heart break with unrequited love listening to the beautiful ones. Let your frustration and confusion free on Computer Blue. Spend a night with a sex fiend on Darling Nikki. Question every aspect of your identity with When Doves Cry. 
seek redemption and transcendence with I would die for you. Party like you're the biggest icon in the world with baby I'm a star and sit back with headphones and let Prince take you to another world with Purple Rain. The album is a true journey and an artist undeniably and absolutely on fire. Time's only effect has been to imprint upon us all just how far ahead of his time Prince remains. The album sounds fresh, vibrant, searching, questioning, yearning, wrapped up in lyrics which contest lust, spirituality, anger, loneliness, fear, redemption and utter joy. Purple Rain transformed Prince's life and also ours. Things would never quite be the same again. Today is the day to treat yourself. Shut out the world, practice some self-care and let Prince guide you through the Purple Rain. <laughs> 